Hi, this is Julia. Welcome back to ASEAN News. Timor Leste needs to improve its economy before joining the ASEAN. While participating in the least developed countries conference in Doha, Qatar, Rui Gomez, Timor Leste's finance minister, clarified about how Timor Leste still needs to improve its economic condition before joining the ASEAN. I came to inform the Prime Minister about the high-level summit in Doha, Qatar, that was participated by Timor Leste as well, and mentioned that we need a little more time to improve our conditions, diversify the economic, and see where is the money come from. Everything needs to be done before us joining the ASEAN and excluded from the least developed country status. At the 40th and 41st high-level summits in Cambodia, ASEAN member states agreed and confirmed Timor Leste's candidacy as the 11th member of ASEAN bloc, but with an observer status. As the observer, Timor Leste has no right to veto or making any decision in any ASEAN member states' meetings, and Timor Leste still needs to adopt more than 300 of agreements in order to become a permanent member of the ASEAN organization. Ashram falls after volcano erupts in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Video posted on social media showed Indonesia's Merapi volcano erupted, spewing hot clouds into the sky and raining ash on nearby towns. The local authorities said the volcano located in Indonesia's Yogyakarta Special Region erupted around 12 p.m. local time and a lava flow of 1.5 km was observed. Residents in the nearby community have been warned to stop any activities in the danger zones range between 3 to 7 km radius from the crater. The 2,963 meter high or 9,721 feet Merapi is one of the Indonesia's most active volcanoes and was already on the country's second highest alert level. Located on the Pacific Rim of Fire, Indonesia has more volcanoes than any other country. Merapi last violently erupted in 2010, killing more than 350 people. Indonesian court emit verdict for suspect in Malan's death list, a stadium stampede. Three Indonesian policemen charged with negligence over the deadly stampede that resulted in the deaths of 135 people in October last year handed their verdicts and any sentences on Thursday, March 16, 2023. Indonesia's Human Rights Commission has said the police officer's firing of tear gas was the main trigger of the fatal stampede on October 1, 2022 at Malang Skanjuruhan Stadium during a match between Indonesian National Leagues, RMFC, and Persebaya FC, the worst tragedy at a soccer match since 1964. Indonesian authorities and the Indonesian Football Association, PSSI, have faced questions over why police fired 45 rounds of tear gas inside the stadium, a crowd control measure banned by the World Soccer Governing Body, FIFA. In January 2023, an Indonesian court began a trial for a handful of police and match officials charged with negligence over the alleged roles in the stampede. Bali tourists disappointed by plans to tighten visas and motorbike rental rules. <laughs> Travelers and business owners said it will hurt the tourism industry in Bali if the Indonesian island goes ahead with its plan to revoke visa on arrival for Russian and Ukrainian tourists as well as ban motorbike rental for foreign tourists. At some point, Russians spend their money on the Indonesian economy. It's not right to revoke visa on arrival. But if they make it hard to get visas for Russians, Ukrainians, we will look for other places to go. Southeast Asia is not Indonesian alone. Thailand has beautiful places. We can move there. It's not a problem for us. It will be a big loss for Indonesia itself. Russian tourists, one of the biggest groups of foreign arrivals in Indonesia, expressed their disappointment with the one saying Russians are helping the Indonesian economy by spending money and will head elsewhere in Southeast Asia if it becomes difficult to obtain a tourist visa. Bali Governor Iwayan Koster said he has asked the Ministry of Law and Human Rights to tighten visa requirements by cancelling the visa on arrival facility specifically for Russian and Ukrainian citizens due to a series of violations. Koster added, his administration also wants to ban motorbike rental for foreigners and urge them to only use transportation provided by travel agencies. More than 77,500 Russians arrived in the Southeast Asian country between September 2022 and January 2023, compared with about 88,000 in the same period just before the pandemic. About 8,800 Ukrainian visitors arrived between September 2022 and January 2023.
Philippine and United States troops hold ceremony before joint military drills. Philippine and U.S. Army officers held a ceremony in Nueva Ecija province on Monday to officially open their three-week annual joint military exercises. Salakanib continues to exercise our human interoperability and strengthens the defense partnership between the Philippines and the United States. According to the Philippine Army Commanding General, Romeo Broner, over 3,000 soldiers from the Philippine and United States armies are taking part in this year's iteration, which will focus its exercises from internal security to territorial defense. Developments in the region in the recent months have given the Philippine Army cause to shift its focus from internal security to territorial defense. This will mean decisive changes in our mindset, in our capabilities, and in our force structure. But more importantly, this has also given us the impetus to develop our alliances and our partnerships with like-minded nations. The exercises underscore improved ties with the United States under President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and comments the Philippine condemns China aggressive actions in the disputed waterway. The Philippines has granted Washington great access to its military bases as part of the latest effort to defer China's increasing assertiveness in the South China Sea and tension over self-ruled Taiwan. Protesters reject South Korea government proposal on wartime forced labor issue. South Koreans held a candlelight vigil in Seoul to protest the government's proposal to resolve the forced labor dispute with Japan. Hundreds of people gathered in front of Seoul City Hall and held up candles and banners reading shameful diplomacy. South Korea said that its companies will compensate people forced to work under Japan's 1910-1945 occupation, seeking to end a dispute that has undercut US-led efforts to present unified fronts against China and North Korea. The proposal was welcomed in Tokyo, but faced an immediate backlash from some victims and from South Korea's main opposition party, who accused the government of capitulating to Japan. Relations between South Korea and Japan plunged to their lowest point in decades after South Korea's Supreme Court in 2018 ordered Japan firms to pay reparations to former forced laborers. Fifteen South Koreans have won cases, but none has been compensated. Japan marks anniversary of Fukushima disaster with flowers and players. Japan marked the 12th anniversary of the 2011 earthquake, tsunami, and Fukushima nuclear disaster, commemorating the loss of over 20,000 people and thousands of homes rendered by uninhabitable by radiation. Prime Minister Fumi Kishida attended a memorial event in Fukushima, taking part in minute silence to remember those who died. In the village of Hisanohama, around 30 kilometers, 18 miles south of the ruined Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, people came to lay flowers and remember a day that saw the area inundated by the tsunami. China said improving economy is key to creating jobs. China's new Premier Le Qiang at a news conference said to mark the end of the annual sitting of parliament in Beijing, developing the economy is the fundamental solution for creating jobs. Li added that China will continue to pursue an employment-first strategy while recognizing that a higher number of college graduates will put pressure on the job market this year. Third party, we will remain steadfast. The former Communist Party chief of Shanghai and close ally of President Xi Jinping was installed as premier and is tasked with reviving the world's second largest economy after three years of COVID-19 curbs. Apply the new development philosophy on all Thank you very much everyone. Have a nice weekend. See you.